at least $20,000 worth of copper. How a neighbor helped officers track down the suspects. The search for Robert Card is now in its second day. He's been on the run since Wednesday night when police say he shot and killed 18 people and injured 13 others. I'm Rena Roy in Lewiston, Maine, and I'll have the latest coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. With the weather throwing us for a loop yesterday and a busy weekend ahead in the Alamo City, a lot of people are wondering not only what this weekend's going to look like, but what it's going to feel like. We are tracking more rain chances and a cold front. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery has the details to help us plan for the packed weekend. Mia. Yep, we've got a couple more showers that are expected throughout the day today. Just isolated into this weekend, temperatures still in the 80s, but as we get into Sunday, late afternoon and into the evening, that's when we're expecting that strong cold front to blow in much colder air into South Central Texas just in time for Halloween. But first, I do want to detail what we're expecting throughout the remainder of this Friday. This is the scene right now out on the radar, just isolated stuff. Got a slightly heavier downpour out in Uvalde County in between Con Canyon and Uvalde here in San Antonio, especially out on the east side, another heavier downpour tracking north along 1604. That's approaching the Schertz area and Randolph Air Force Base. And then just off to the south, a few more heavier downpours pushing through Wilson County in between Highway 87 and 181. Another little downpour there just to the west of Fall City. All of that is tracking north and generally throughout the remainder of the day, we're going for about a 40% potential, a few more widely separate downpours, maybe a stray rumble of thunder here or there. Temperatures climbing into the low to mid 80s for those forecast highs. Winds out of the southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, so a little breezy. That 40% will continue, especially by Friday night football plans, so probably a good idea to take the rain gear with you just to be on the safe side. Looking ahead to the upcoming weekend, just isolated rain chances in the forecast. Again, those highs still mild in the 80s. But then we see those changes blow in on Sunday. As of right now, that time frame looking like the late afternoon and into the evening. You will immediately notice it. Temperatures will start to drop. Gusty north winds will pick up and another scattered rain chance returns to the forecast. So we'll time it all out and get you that trick or treating forecast as well. Coming up in just a few. Mia. New at noon, a 40 year old woman dead after a driver hit her while she was trying to just cross the street. Police say last night the woman was making her way across Southeast Loop 410 near Roosevelt Avenue. A driver did see her slow down in order for her to cross. And that's when a second driver in an SUV switched lanes and ended up hitting the victim instead. We're told the driver did not see the woman until it was too late. They did stop to help. They're not going to face any charges. That victim pronounced dead at the scene. Four people accused of stealing thousands of dollars worth of copper wire are behind the metal doors at the Bear County Jail. San Antonio police say they caught him in the act, stealing it from a piece of property once occupied by CPS Energy. Katrina Weber tells us why this case has some people scratching their heads. With their boots on the ground, San Antonio police put in the work to investigate a crime, which they say had four suspects going to new depths. They got called to West Jones Avenue near North St. Mary's around three this morning by someone in a nearby building who spotted strange behavior in the parking lot of what used to be a CPS energy site. This is the first call that I've ever seen like this. This is not something that is usually easy for someone to do. Police say the group was stealing copper wire, but not from the usual places. They say it looks like they somehow got it from underground. So we we're unsure how they got it or what tools they may have used. One possibility, police say, is that they accessed it through a manhole after gaining access themselves to the property. This is the hole in the fence that police believe some of the suspects used to get into this parking lot. They say at least one other came in by truck on the other side and then drove into the warehouse. Once there, police say the suspects loaded all that wire into a pickup, a truckload of copper valued at around $20,000. It's kind of odd that these suspects were able to kind of know where this wire is. It's a crime that has police scratching their heads. Meanwhile, the suspects, a 25 year old woman and three men in their 30s, 40s and 50s may be trying to wrap their minds around the fact that they're facing criminal charges. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
We are learning more about the San Antonio police officer who shot and killed a man earlier this week. San Antonio police officials say Officer John Carroll shot and killed 34-year-old Ruben Garcia after the two struggled over Garcia's handgun. The officer was wearing a body camera at the time. We have not yet seen that footage. It hasn't been released. Right now, Carroll is on administrative leave, which is protocol. He's been with the San Antonio police for four years. A woman killed after a rollover crash on I-35 on the southwest side this morning. That's according to San Antonio police. Officers tell us the crash happened between 5 this morning on the northbound lanes of the highway that's near Somerset Road. They said the woman was ejected from her car after it rolled over and landed on a grassy median. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The manhunt on the East Coast for the shooter who took 18 lives in Lewiston, Maine on Wednesday night is going into its second full day and that impact hitting schools and businesses for a second day as most people are still hunkering down in their homes until he is found. ABC's Rena Roy is there with more on the names and stories of those the shooter targeted. Overnight, investigators appearing no closer to catching Robert Card, the Army reservist wanted for the deadly mass shootings in Maine. Heavily armed police surrounding a home associated with Card Thursday night. Loud bangs ringing out through the neighborhood as police shouted for Card to surrender. ABC's Aaron Katursky describes the scene. A number of tactical vehicles and, and troops come in, drones, helicopters, and uh, our reporters there heard uh, call, calling out commands to, to say, come out, calling the suspect by his name. Uh, and, and the suspicion was that they may have had him surrounded. But nearly two hours later, most of the SWAT teams leaving the property. Police say Card opened fire at a bowling alley and nearby restaurant in the small city of Lewiston Wednesday night, killing 18 people and injuring 13. ABC News learning Card's sister told investigators she thought her brother may have been going after an ex-girlfriend at the bowling alley. Two counties still under shelter-in-place advisories this morning. Schools and businesses are closed as far as 50 miles from the shooting scenes. Everybody's scared. I mean, nobody is used to having a shooter in Maine. According to sources, investigators finding a suicide note at Card's home addressed to his son. It did not provide a motive for the rampage, but contained bank information and what are described as rantings. Card this past summer was treated at a mental health facility after reportedly hearing voices and allegedly threatening to attack a National Guard facility. It appears Card was thoughtful about eluding police. He left behind a cell phone, which authorities have recovered, but apparently Card suspected the phone would be tracked. In Lewiston, Ike Jachi for ABC News. The Spurs are back in action tonight, hosting the Houston Rockets. They'll be trying to work off of that loss to the Mavericks and see what they've learned coming up. For the past several years, an art studio on the west side has been offering women a place where they can stretch their creative muscles. Why one artist says it's changed her life. Putting memories and treasures into art, part of the magic of a studio that's been healing women for three decades here. Tiffany Huertas with how paint and clay are manifesting change on the west side. Mujer Artes really, really changed my life. Adriana Netro has been coming to Mujer Artes Adobe Studio on the west side for about six years. This is made out of clay, and we can see that in this particular piece, we are using red clay and white clay. This almost 30-year program is run by Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. It's located on South Colorado and Guadalupe Street. Netro says it's changed her life in many ways. I was coming from a really depressed uh, era in my life. Uh, the uh, lost, losing my my partner. So when I came here, it, it gave me the freedom to express my inner feelings. Women from all over San Antonio come here to create art. And we do like Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is December 12th. That's what I'm working on right now. Ana Uviedo has been part of this program for about 19 years. We put our childhood memories into our creativity. These handmade items tell the stories from women in San Antonio. This one shows a woman sewing and this other one at the market. 
this uh, program starts uh, with the idea of helping the women in the West Side to give them some tools so they can prosper. The community is welcome to visit and see their latest work for Dia de los Muertos. The cruces, the virgenes, all these pieces you can put in your altar. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And that is a big question for this weekend, Dia de los uh, Muertos. Yeah. Well, maybe Saturday and Sunday will work out just fine for them, but today, maybe not so much. Today, we just have some spotty downpours out there. Tomorrow, though, I think coverage is going to be a little bit less, and that will continue throughout the majority of the day on Sunday before we start to see that strong cold front move in. But, of course, this follows the heavy rain that we had yesterday. The aquifer is seeing a little bit of a boost, up 7 tenths of a foot. 634.5 is the reading for today. Unfortunately, the downside of rain, is that molds are high, but ragweed, yes, it is in the pollen count, but it is low as we wrap up this work week. We're going to get you a look ahead to the upcoming weekend and the changes on the way. And also, we just got some new information in on the Fort Sam Houston tornado that happened yesterday. We'll get to those details after the break. Driving home yesterday afternoon, actually water in the Guadalupe Creek. One day it's going to be a river again, but right now it's just it's just a creek. But there's some or a stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flowing fast, same thing but. with uh, the Cibolo. Well, that's good. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. We just got to keep seeing a few more of these healthy rain systems pushing through, helping us tack on to those totals in the rainfall department. Heavy rain was the big story for most of us yesterday, except, of course, for the brief weak tornado that was able to spin up around the morning commute time yesterday morning as well. Now, National Weather Service survey crews have just completed their preliminary survey over in that area. And this is what they are rating it as of right now. They're calling it the Fort Sam Houston tornado. Right now it's rated an EF zero tornado. That is the lowest rating on the enhanced Fujita scale. 80 miles per hour estimated peak winds. The track was about 5.17 miles. They were able to pinpoint some of the damage saying that it started near East Commerce and then it traveled north to the Austin Highway area. A lot of the video that we got into KSAT Connect yesterday was from right around that I-35 Highway 281 interchange. The duration started from about 8.01 in the morning and lasted to about 8.18 a little bit later on, about 17 minutes later. So we will have a web article of all of their findings up on KSAT.com in just a little bit. Not really expecting anything like that today, but we do have the potential for a few more spotty downpours and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. The farther west that you go, Medina County, Uvalde County, just a few isolated showers working their way farther northward closer to the Bandera area and even near Kerrville. Still monitoring this hefty little downpour near Randolph Air Force Base as well as shirts that's going to continue working northward closing in on I-35 over the next 20 to 30 minutes here. And then as we work our way farther southward, still monitoring some of these training downpours yet again near Floresville, Poth, Fall City, even over to Lavernia there in northern Wilson County, fixing to cross over the Highway 87 corridor. It's not going to be for everybody today, but still, if you are planning on heading out to any Friday evening plans, probably a good idea to, to at least take the umbrella with you should you briefly need to use it. Here's four o'clock. You can see some additional downpours out there, especially across our eastern counties, and then just a few more possible six, seven, eight p.m. Closing in on the 11 p.m. to even midnight hour tonight. A few more showers possible, especially across portions of the hill country and over into the southern Edwards Plateau region. Through the overnight hours, though, we've just got about a 20% potential for an isolated shower. And as we head into your Saturday, by about 10 a.m., we're going to keep that 20% potential going. Pretty isolated throughout the weekend. And, of course, that all is ahead, though, of this next cold front that's going to blow a taste of winter into south central Texas.
areas by early next week. But first, here's your weekend forecast. Muggy mornings, low 70s expected. Highs still mild in the low to mid 80s. But after we see that front move in, dropping by about 40 degrees almost when you compare Sunday's afternoon high to Monday. We've got forecast highs slated for the 40s right now before we slowly start to warm things back up throughout the remainder of next week. So let's time that out. You can see while we're sitting in the low 80s here in San Antonio, it's a little bit of a different story up into the Texas Panhandle, upper 40s already in Amarillo. Now this front currently near San Angelo and even closer to the Metroplex, it's going to stay north of our area as we head into Saturday and even into the majority of our Sunday. So we're just warm and humid. But as we head into the late afternoon and evening hours on Sunday, that's when we see that front get a little bit of an extra push, and that's going to allow it to move through South Central Texas. And instantly we will start to see those temperatures drop and those gusty north winds are going to kick on. So temperatures could drop as much as 15 to even 20 degrees as soon as it passes you by, you will know that it has reached your area because again, those winds will really kick on gusting upwards to even 40 miles per hour Sunday night and into early Monday morning as temperatures fall into the 40s, wind chills in the 30s are expected. So definitely prepare for coat weather, needing to bundle up the kids, especially by Monday morning. Trick or treat forecast. Good news is we should start to see some of that rain ending. We'll see some scattered rain and storms move in Sunday evening and Sunday night. That continues into our Monday. A few showers possible early Tuesday, but then that starts to work its way out just in time for trick or treating, but still expected to be cold, expected to be breezy going to be one of the coldest Halloweens that we've seen in quite some time, guys. We're going to need more than just that ghost sheet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're going to need the layers on underneath the ghost exactly. sheet, that's for sure. All right, so let's take you downtown to find out what the question is. It's got to be Halloween question, doesn't it? You think? Of course. Mm, yes, right, indeed. Absolutely. The classic old movies. Who is the best Scariest favorite mo uh, monster, I guess you would say. Wolfman, Mummy, Dracula, or Frankenstein's monster. Pick one. Yep. Dracula. I know. I'm going with Dracula. Dracula <laughs> cannot be beat. Classic, classic yeah. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. yeah. What do you say? That was mine, Dracula. Frankenstein's yes. monster. Oh. Boris Karloff as the monster. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was classic. You would okay, remember. something that's not very scary. We just want to point out these are some of the goodies that you can get at a local restaurant. We're going to tell you all about that. And a big free pizza party coming up as well. Mm -hmm. Make sure you scan that QR code, though, right there. So. Pizza and cookies? Oh, yeah, of course. And yes. cookies. Yeah, they're right down the street. Wow, that's a. Lunch of champions. That's a fun Friday. <laughs> that's right a Friday. There. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see y'all in a while. Hey, the Spurs are going to see what they learned from that loss to the Mavs Wednesday night when they host the Rockets tonight. And the Rangers rookie ready for the spotlight. During the 60s, uh, the Altares became something very powerful for the Chicano community. Uh, many of our Chicanos were being killed in Vietnam. For example, in just Edgewood School District alone, over 55 were killed in Vietnam. And that's not even including the rest of the West Side or the South Side or the rest of the Southwest. And so the Altares and the homes became a very powerful, um, very personal. My two older brothers went to Vietnam and uh, my cousin didn't come back. On the west side, one of the manifestations that, that is um, particularly beautiful and powerful is the conflation, if you will, of military service among Latino, mostly men in the earlier days, who die in, in service, in the military service serving the U.S. I believe that that conflation of military and Day of the Dead is unique to San Antonio. So basically, uh, during the Vietnam War, the Altares took on a very strong and passionate uh, altar that was cultura at its finest. What's great about the NBA this time is the season, no matter what happened last game, not too far from the next game. So we're coming off that opening season loss at home to the Mavericks. But 
Sort of forget that one. It's time for the Houston Rockets. The Spurs doing the Texas two-step, although you do want to move forward. Still, you got to learn from what the past was like. Victor Wimbayama has to watch those silly fouls so he can get into an offensive rhythm. The Spurs can't make crazy mistakes toward the end of the game, like turnovers and bad shots. they got to get a lot of contributions for a lot of different guys, like Devin Vassell at 23. The Rockets are coming off a loss. Houston lost Wednesday night in Orlando, 116-86. to so here's a look at the matchup tonight. It's the Rockets and the Spurs. Somebody's going to be wanted one. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock at the Frost Bank Center. Highlights for you coming up tonight on the Night Beat. Hey, the big game big game coverage tonight. The Taft Raiders face the Jay Mustangs, District 29-6A. The Raiders are 6-2 overall, 5-1 in district after starting the season 0-3. They have reeled off five straight and are looking for more. If the Raiders win, they'll face Harlan for a share of the 26-6A crown in two weeks. But they first have to beat the Mustangs tonight. John Jay, 7-1 overall this season, 5-1 in district, 29-6A. And they are coming off their first loss of the season. They lost 42-33 to undefeated Harlan. Jay is playoff bound and looking to beat the Raiders, who are 6-2. Once again, kickoff tonight is at 7-30 at Gus Stadium. And this weekend, full of college football action right here in town. It's UTSA hosting East Carolina. The Roadrunners looking to go 4-0 and in their conference. East Carolina is winless in the conference. Jeff Trailer should be ready. Remember, he was hit with that mousetrap earlier this week. Tulane and SMU also 3-0 in the conference. So a lot of big bundle up at the top. BYU coming to Austin to take on the Texas Longhorns. Tomorrow, Malik Murphy will be starting for Quinn Rewers, who got hurt. So that'll be interesting to see how he handles that. Then Texas A&M hosting South Carolina. That game is at 11 in the morning. Texas is at 2 in 2.30 in the afternoon. And then on Sunday, look, we got more action for you. The Texans and the Panthers. The Texans could actually get above 500. The Panthers 0-6. Texans are 3-3. Three three. That kickoff is at noon. Also kicking off at noon, it's the Rams. And the Cowboys, after Dallas had the bye week last week, they should be ready for the Rams. They don't want to look ahead because next week it's the Eagles, so they got to take care of the Rams tomorrow or Sunday afternoon. All right, if the Spurs tonight wasn't enough, how about the Globe Life Field in Arlington looking pretty sharp because they are ready to host a 2023 World Series. It's the Texas Rangers and the Arizona Diamondbacks, probably two teams, not very many, at going this far because they're both we're wild card teams. And of course, there's MacArthur High School alum and former Texas Tech Josh Young. And this is a dream come true for him. I mean, yeah, growing up in Texas, this is pretty cool, pretty special. Um, that, that ALCS was pretty cool too. Um, I mean, it's always been a dream of mine to play in the World Series, uh, to potentially win a World Series. Um, to be doing it my rookie year, to have a chance to do it is pretty crazy. Um, the dynamic of the team from last year to this year, just crazy. Um, don't really know how to put it all into words. Um, still kind of surreal. Still have those like, hey, pinch me kind of things. But, um, but we're here and we're ready to do it. All right, so they'll start doing it tonight, 7-0-3 in Arlington with game one against Arizona. You got a roof for the Rangers now because he's from San Antonio, MacArthur High grad. So, you know. Like to see young kids from my, here. My well, family, though, in Houston, uh -oh. isn't gonna like this. Well, it's it's over. They can, you know, they can root for the. Rain. It's a Texas team. It's a okay. Texas thing. Okay. Can't root for Arizona, can you? No, but I got family there too. <laughs> the Dia de los Muertos festival taking place over the next couple of days, and that means you're gonna be seeing a lot of well-decorated altars, sir, altars. And while all of them are meant to honor loved ones, we're going to show you how a few also hope to raise awareness about an important issue. Gaza running out of fuel as the UN warns hospitals are on the brink of collapse. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Jerusalem, and I'll have all the latest coming up.